everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. For those of you who don't know, my name is Eva and here on my channel I cover recent missing person cases. If you're into that type of content, please subscribe. With that being said, let's just go ahead and dive into today's case. Before we get started, I just want to apologize in advance if I mispronounce anything. Today I want to talk about John Stivers. Before we talk about his disappearance, I want to tell you a little bit about John. John is a 52-year-old man from Jamestown, California. He's a father and a husband, and he's pretty well known around the area because he owns the Lake Tulloch campgrounds and has for about two decades now. I believe he also does some landscaping work, but I'm not too sure how involved he is with that. Like I said, John is pretty well known around the area and he's well liked within his community. Keeping this in mind, it only makes sense that since his disappearance on Monday, August 2nd, many members of the community have been involved with his search efforts. John was last seen on Monday night heading to Sonora. I've read some sources claim that he was coming from Lake Tulloch, which is about 40 minutes away. John was reported missing that same night. It didn't take long for authorities to find John's vehicle, which was parked along Campo Seco Road in Jamestown. Unfortunately, however, John was not located with his vehicle. I'm gonna insert some views of the road that his car was located on from Google so you have an idea of what the area looks like. As you can see, there seems to be some houses and buildings on this road. However, as you travel further along the road, it seems to become more desolate with shrubbery and empty land. After locating John's car, authorities urged individuals to stay away from this area and they closed Campo Seco Road at Seco Terrace Road and Golden Oaks Road in order to assist with their investigation. That's basically all the information that we have from law enforcement in regards to John's disappearance. According to individuals who saw John's van prior to the road closure, the car was completely off to the side of the road, the lights were off, and all the doors were closed. I've read that it looked like he intentionally pulled over and parked his car. So from what I gather, it doesn't look like things were in disarray. Like I mentioned, part of the road has been closed off as part of the investigation. To me, this could mean one of two things, or both. The road closure could simply be to preserve John's trail and any evidence. For example, limiting the numbers of individuals in that area will help to not contaminate John's trail. This way, not only are his footprints better preserved if there are any, but so is his scent trail if they decide to bring in tracking dogs or scent dogs. The second thing the road closure may indicate is that while searching John's van, law enforcement found something that was concerning. This could include some type of note or bodily fluid that might have caused them to be alarmed and close the road for that reason. If police did find something concerning, it's possible that they closed the road not only to search the area themselves, but also to prevent passersby from stumbling upon a scene themselves. Despite closing off this stretch of road, however, John is still missing four days later and authorities do not have any updates about his whereabouts. Locals have pointed out that several others have also disappeared from the area. I looked a little bit further into this and was actually a little bit surprised at what I found. I'm going to show you the unsolved missing person posts made by the Tolmy County Sheriff's Office since 2020. John's would be the sixth in this list and remember that these are only the cases that currently remain unsolved that occurred within this past year and a half. If we try to look for a trend, we see that the majority of these open cases are cases of missing men. These men also all appear to have dark hair and beards. For the cases that detail the missing person's last known whereabouts, it seems that the individuals disappeared while they were traveling or while they were outside. In one of these men's cases, Eduardo Martinez Perez, his vehicle was also located similarly to John's, but neither man was found with his car. Despite these similarities though, these disappearances may have nothing to do with one another. For example, it's not uncommon for men to have beards, so the fact that these men all have that in common might not mean anything. It's also not uncommon to hear about a vehicle being located without the missing person, so this happening in both John and Eduardo's case might not have any significance. In terms of other possibilities, is it possible that John wasn't the one driving his vehicle? Maybe someone else drove it and was the one to abandon it on Campo Seco Road. We'll have to see if police uncover any unknown fingerprints in the vehicle, although of course these can always be wiped. Is it possible that John was the one driving and that he spotted somebody who looked like they needed help or somebody that looked like they were having car troubles? In this situation, he might have pulled over to try to help and honestly, after what I've heard about John, this is something that he would definitely do and something might have happened from there. I'm sure investigators are exploring all avenues here. As of now, the community continues to search for John. According to Michelle, John's wife, boats were taken out onto Don Pedro and other bodies of water to search. Ground search 
searches have also commenced in various areas and I've also heard mention of air searches. Like I said, John is highly respected and loved in his community and it's great to see everybody coming together to help in his search efforts. I truly hope that he comes home safely soon. John is 6'2 and weighs 215 pounds. He has hazel eyes and salt and pepper hair. He was last seen wearing jeans, possibly a Lake Tulloch shirt, and a Tilly's hat. If you have any information about John's whereabouts, the number for you to call will be down in the description below, along with all my sources. I'll keep you guys updated with any information down in the comments, but that's all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.